Crossbreeding in animals, whether it be scientifically made or with Mother Nature's unquestionable powers, hybrids have been a thing of the past, present, and future. The Vacanti ear mouse, or also nicknamed the mouse with an ear on its back, this experiment has been around for a hot minute, since the 90s to be exact, and had recently celebrated the 20th anniversary of their success back in 2017. You might have heard about it in textbooks or on the TV, but I'm going to talk about the interview that they did for the anniversary. Charles Vacanti, the scientist who created it, explains that during the mid 80s he wanted to address the organ shortage that was happening around the world. He stated, well, why don't we do what humans do when we need something? We design it and we make it. Charles first asked around to see what was the hardest part of the human body to reconstruct and found out that it was in fact the ears. They never got the shape right, so he took it upon himself to create a scaffolding in the shape of a human ear. Charles would state, the material is man-made, biocompatible, and bioabsorbable. It disappears over time. Once you've made the ear-shaped scaffolding, then you seed it with cartilage cells and put it all into an incubator. After this process is done, he took it out of the incubator and then implanted it into an animal. This was also never supposed to get revealed to the public, and Charles was trying to keep it on the down low while this was all still a work in progress. It wasn't until reporters went to interview his brother at a university, he was the one that accidentally spilled the beans by saying, hey, I got something really cool to show you. They took photos and it obviously went viral. Controversy stuck, the public went a little crazy with it, and the experiment pretty much stopped after that. Coyote wolf breeds, also known as koi wolves. To all my fellow Eastern Canadians and some parts of the US, you know those coyotes we see in our neighborhoods or parks when we are walking our dogs? Yeah, those are more than likely hybrid coyote wolves. This is happening because of the ongoing issues of deforestation, forcing a lot of eastern wolves to interbreed with western coyotes. The first one ever recorded was actually here in Ontario back in 1919, and now today they are finding wolf DNA in coyotes feces as far as Virginia. Usually with interbreeds of animals with different sizes, you can imagine that the koi wolf is right in between those numbers. They are 55 pounds heavier than their coyote lineage, and to quote, with longer legs, a larger jaw, smaller ears, and a bushier tail. From the Smithsonian Magazine. Now, you'd think, wait, aren't most hybrids sterile? Yes, you'd be correct, but because their genomes are quite similar to each other, allowing them to beat the odds of not being able to reproduce. There's also a little bit of dog in them, with scientists discovering Doberman and German Shepherd DNA in quite a few of them. They're speculating that this also makes them more tolerant of our cities and all the noise it produces. I know I've talked about Azores before, but what about a Zonkey? Much like the Zors, they are a hybrid offspring of a zebra and a donkey. They're only given this name if the offspring's parents are a male zebra and a female donkey. If it was the other way around, however, they would be given the funky name of Z-Donk. <laughs> it seems to harbor more of its father's traits, having the overall shape of a donkey, with some faded stripes appearing on its body from its mother's side. It kind of looks like a zebra had rolled around on a really dusty floor, with the top part of its body rocking a tan, brown, or gray sprinkling while the underside of it is much wider. While donkeys are a lot more domesticated, mainly due to the fact that humans have been using them for so long for work purposes, the zebra side to them tends to make this hybrid a little more energetic and aggressive. They have the strength and speed of a zebra while also harboring the stamina of a donkey. These two characteristics are quite powerful when they're put together, if you can imagine. The Zhou, also known as the yak cattle hybrid. This crazy looking animal is the result of a male yak and a domestic cow. Because of its very unique blend of the two parents, the Zhou is able to survive and thrive in high altitude environments. You can find them in Tibet, Bhutan, parts of northern India, and other parts of Central Asia that may have rugged terrain. They are quite the useful and easygoing hybrid species if you want to work with them. Much like their parents, they offer milk, meat, labor, and a temperate attitude that makes them quite easy to work with. They don't mind where they graze as long as it's edible in some way. They adapt super well to the current climate of things where agriculture is shifting and climate change is right at the forefront. The Zhou have that muscular build like their yak fathers, allowing them to work in tougher conditions, but 
but their mother's DNA keeps them from acting out like a yak. They have a beautiful coat with long fur that can appear with a mix of deep black, rich brown, light gray, or white. It keeps them well insulated against the frigid temperatures that their mountain habitats have to offer. They offer hope to those that live in the colder, remote areas of Central Asia. Cows are now potentially producing human milk for us. This was started back in April of 2011, and scientists in China were able to create a cow milk that had traces of the protein lysozyme in it, which is usually found only in human milk that boosts our offspring's immunity. It's supposed to be a suitable alternative to human's milk, mainly for mothers who aren't able to produce their own milk, or if they happen to be sick and they simply do not want to transfer over their illness. They claim modified bovine milk is a possible substitute for human milk. It's the possible in that sentence that makes me feel a little uneasy. Despite the supposed goodness in their hearts as to why they're doing this, not many places want to fund this experiment. David Nation, who works at Dairy Futures CRC in Melbourne, stated, The dairy industry in Australia made a very definite decision to discontinue investment in transgenics because there are still lots of technical limitations and still large ethical issues to resolve with the community. The constant problem when we're messing around with animal DNA is that there are a lot of issues when it comes to trying to get them to adulthood. In China, out of the 312 cows that were implanted with this additional gene into their unborn embryos, only 37 full-term calves came out and only 4 made it to an age where they could lactate. That is the biggest question they have still yet to answer. How do they get over this hurdle of all abnormalities that come with these experiments? The Daddy Long Legs Spider, or should I say short legs now? Because scientists for some reason decided on giving them shorter limbs than their famous ridiculous long ones. The lead author of this case, Gaynet, reassures this wasn't all for fun and games. He states, Our purpose was not just to shorten their legs just for the sake of it. We wanted to understand more about how these fascinating creatures evolved their alien way of locomotion and body plan. They did this by basically deleting the gene that allows them to grow the long legs. And instead, they started developing their shorter, deformed looking ones in the embryo. There were three pairs that came out with shortened walking legs, since the daddy long legged spider only uses three of its legs for movement, while the rest kind of scour the air to sense its surroundings. Despite these spiders being able to hatch, to no surprise, they did not make it to adulthood with all the gene deletions and additions they were doing. The Galapagos Islands, a very intriguing piece of land that harbors two types of iguana. Ones that prefer the land and ones that prefer the water. Back in 1977, however, biology professor Howard Snell discovered that there was a third species of iguana on the island, one that was interbred by the marine and terrestrial iguanas. The characteristics that he noticed in his statement were very intermediate. Over the span of 23 years since their first discovery, only 20 so far have ever been reported in the wild, and also making Snell one of the very few whose actions seen them in person. It has a shorter snout, much like a marine iguana, which helps them feed on algae that grow on rocks at the bottom of the ocean. The land iguana, on the other hand, has a long pointed face, so this hybrid offspring has this weird meshed up in between similarity, kind of like a pug. However, it does choose to stay on land, since that's where it's been spotted the most. But due to some other physical characteristics, like longer claws, with a flat tail that the marine iguana has, they are speculating to be good swimmers and have proven to be exceptional climbers. Land iguanas have to wait for their fruit to fall, but not the hybrid. Have you discovered any hybrids before? Let me know down below and I will see you all in the next video.